Hello, hello, yeah, hello. Γεια σας αγάπη μου, τι κάνετε, how are you? Πολύ καλά. Γεια σας αγάπη μου. We are back with the third and final part uh, to discuss the last entries for this year's contest. Are we ready to begin? Yes. Because we have, mm -hmm. we have a lot to talk about. Yeah, so let's kick things off with, uh, yes, with Armenia. News, take it off. <laughs> you know what? I didn't have much high hopes for Armenia this year just because the way that the contest was going, I was just like, how are they going to give us something that's super unique and different this year? Because they've been sending such hot, friendly, polished numbers. And that's not the route that this year's Eurovision is really going down. Like, it's a lot of diverse and cultural, very, very rich. We didn't have, I didn't think that they were going to send us a traditional traditional number. I don't see, I'm so excited to talk about this because genuinely I love this song so much. And I love the band. I've been a fan of the band for many years. And I just didn't think that they would be going forward to Eurovision this year. And they are. And I think it's a really good song. I mean, it's not the most vocally strong song, but like it is a bop and it's a party song and it is really happy. So it's going to bring a lot of joy in this year's contest, I think. Uh, I think that they are big names in yeah. you know, huge artists in Armenia, huge, right? Huge in the community around the world in the Armenian community anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone knows who they are. So, yeah, it's really exciting. Laura? I love this. It's actually in my top 10. Really? I just love the fact that it expresses Armenian culture and it, you can actually see it for what it is. Like, at this point, I'm just going to declare myself as a non-identified Armenian because I've listened to it that much. If Nuji's Armenian style will accept <laughs> Definitely. We might have to... I was going to say dye your hair, but I don't have black hair either, so... Yeah, very yeah. We'll get some wigs. We'll get some wigs. It's fine. I've just yeah, yeah. We, we have to get some wigs for different occasions. I think yes. you will need that. Yeah, I, I'm down. We do. We do. I'm gonna have to get you white haired wigs for Lithuania. This is how it's gonna run. Yeah, but yeah, I, I absolutely love this song. It's literally in my top ten. I listen to it all the time, and it just makes you feel happy. Yes, like, I know there's a lot of like boppy songs this year, but this one genuinely makes you feel happy. So I'm in love. Dude. Absolutely. I mean, to be honest, I remember my reaction to it and my initial words were like, oh, my God, like this is a happy song. And like it's like pure happiness. Like when you see it, when you listen to it, you're like, and like I think we need this sort of like happiness and at the same time I think if they do something similar with the music video with the chickens and all that I mean you cannot really get real chickens on stage but like you'll have to sort of like uh, I can throw my chickens at her like I will be like in Mama <laughs> Arena <laughs> and like just like that environment of like in a little village that gorgeous girl yeah. and that handsome guy with the guitar and the um uh, well, it's not the duduk, it's something no, else. No, it, it's, it's just a flute, I think. Because... Yeah, it's like a small, it's not as big as the duduk. Yeah. And like, it's just like, you know, creating like a little village. Let's do that. Let's create a little Armenian village on stage. Yeah. And I, I think it's going to be like top 15. I think so too. Yes, I agree. And I think that this is one of the songs this year that will come alive on stage. Like, and for those who don't appreciate it now, I think that the energy they will bring to the live <laughs> arena and the whole crowd will go crazy with this song. They will yeah. get more points than we are thinking right now. Uh, I love the song. I love that it's ethnic. Uh, for me, and Nus will understand it, it's so Greek. It like, it's like almost traditional Greek with a mix. And I think that the Greek people will support this song. And it's giving me Moldova 2022 vibes. I don't know Everyone's why. Everyone's like, saying this. Everyone's been mm. saying this. And hopefully they can get like the same result because they killed it with a televote in 2022. Yeah. So well done, Armenia. And we move on close to Armenia. We're going to Georgia with Nun. <gasps> and I want uh, Laura to start with Georgia. <laughs> 
I'm feeling really the same, girl. I'm feeling the same with this song. I have been manifesting this girl to represent Georgia for years. I even tweeted about it back in 2021, and now it's happening. I don't know what to do with myself because I genuinely love the woman so much I could cry. It's so bad. I want to do the dance moves all over the floor in Malma at Wee Wee Jam, and yes, you can record it because this song just serves me life. I I just I could wax my legs and still be screaming in pain to this song and love it. I I just love her. I can't. I um, could be here all day talking about but her. I can't imagine me and you because we both love her so so much. Uh the moment that we're gonna get to interview Nuta. Yeah. Oh my I'm gonna God. Be like... It's gonna be a Blanca Paloma situation all over again. Oh my god, if it is again, I'll literally be screaming for that moment. I, mean, I love you. I didn't get to interview Blanca Paloma last year, but I got me neither, yeah. I got this feeling with Lorraine. Uh the moment I walked in the room and like she came to hug me, I was like, Lorraine. <laughs> yeah. She's real. She's real, yes. Hi, uh, mom. I love you, mom. But well, you, her. Nora, spoke to her as well. You and you guys. I did. Time. I did. I spoke to her a few times. Yeah. Oh I my god, we had that moment with her, and I sang to her, and she was like I this. Just... Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah that, that, that I, honestly, that woman, that was off my bucket list. That is one thing I wanted to do. And I've done it. If I do it again, I'll be so fucking happy because I love her. Well, it could happen mm-hmm. again. She's definitely going to be there, isn't she? Yeah. So, yeah. She's going to be there. I said that my inner child will be crying. Uh, <laughs> oh, about New Georgia? New Georgia. Oh, my God. I am literally rooting for her so badly. That music video, like, in the rain. And, like, it's such a bop. And I was actually listening to that song, like, all day today. And I think the more I listen to it, like, the more I'm drawn to her. Like, she is, like, like, like she is the femme fatale queen of the season. Yeah. And we have so many, like, strong, independent women this year. Like, it's, like, it's quite, like, a female dominant, um, like, like, a, like a dominatrix season for Eurovision. You know, it's just incredibly... You know, it's like femme fatale, and I think she is just a, a good sort of like icon this season, and I love her so much. It's she's so good. Uh, Nush, do you think because Georgia hasn't been in the final for many, many years, and I they try they and last year for me personally, I think that the song last year was amazing. Uh, do you think that this year they have chances to be in the grand final? Yeah, I do. I 100% do. In fact, this I felt bad because I didn't put this in my top 15, but I, if there was a world I could put all of those songs in there, the, the ones that I really like, that's one of the, my favourites for sure. Like, There's just too many favourites I have this year. That's the problem I'm having. But I think this is way stronger because, I mean, yeah, I like last year's song too. So, I mean, anything could happen, but you can see her ability to perform that song in the music video with that dancing. Oh, my God. Like, I don't see how this can go wrong. Whereas last year, it was all, era was kind of like just going like this, wasn't she? It, wind. I think there will be wind, but there's going to be some movement. And I think that's what we need uh, to really get everyone's attention. And the so, vocals yeah. are going to be there because mm-hmm. this girl oh, yeah. can sing. So mm-hmm. with the high notes uh, at the last part, I'm going to be like in the grand final. I think also that the juries will eat this up. I oh, can 100%. see this being the girl Bob that the juries will support. Mm-hmm. I have it on my top 10 right now. Uh, for me personally, it's a grower. Like at the beginning, I was okay. I like it. But day by day, it's starting to grow on me like top 10 right now. So, well done, Georgia. And we continue with Portugal. (sighs) Let's go to Portugal. Uh, I will start by saying that many people are sleeping on this song. Um, I don't think, I don't know if you're going to agree with me. Uh, This is on my 10th place this year. Yes, (laughs) I was expecting this. Uh, to everyone I'm saying that uh, I don't know 
something it grabs me about this performance. Like the moment it starts, I'm like this. And by the end with a high note, I'm sold. So um, I don't think if this mm -hmm. will qualify to the grand final mm -hmm. because it's only televote. But if this qualify, I can easily see something like 2022 with Sodade and the jury's sub because it's quality for me personally. Uh, Noosh? I actually really like this song. I, do, <laughs> I, I agree with you. I think I personally do see this in the final. I think that the staging is incredible, like really, really good. And also the, I mean, it's it's got catchy elements to it, which I think is beneficial for it. But there is an element of me that's like, okay, this isn't in my top 10. Yes. Because there's just other catchier songs. Unfortunately, that's something that is what gets me into music. I really want to like feel everything about it. And if I'm only just listening to it on the side, I'm not quite as drawn into it. So this one is amazing and meant for the stage, I think. So it it all depends on what the other performances go down like, but I do see this qualifying off the get-go anyway. Don't forget, in contrast with Nuj, I'm a ballad whore. I, I love good ballads. I love some big vocals, something like that. This year we don't have a strong female <laughs> ballad. Uh, all we don't. We have oh. a couple. We have a couple. Come on, like Ramon. Ramonda. I mean. <clears throat> not, not this kind of because it's not the kind of ballad that I that I'm talking mm. about. I'm talking. I, about I think you mean a bit more like mellow, like not quite ballad, but like yes, maybe something like with a big note mm. at the end and screaming mm. and um, passion. Uh, Serbia. It's more of a Victoria soft kind of yeah for me like yeah victoria from bulgaria right yes like yes he, he's, yeah he's growing up is yeah oh yeah very similar to that by the way yeah okay uh Oz, about portugal portugal is not on my top 10 but i actually really like this song i was actually checking the um the semifinals of the portugal like the, the semifinal that portugal is in and to be honest I think in terms of like big vocals this year, that's going to determine um, a lot of the achievements. And I think like Apostolis, like what she said about like this big finish and the big, big vocals is, is something that is going to like serve Portugal well. I just definitely see this entry as a qualifier, like definitely. Definitely. I, I love I love the song. It's just that like I I I kind of like prepared my top. 15 today but this year is so difficult that i feel like i am almost as confused as how i was back in 2021 yes. like maybe even more things will change lara um i don't know i like it it's beautifully composed but it just a <laughs> girly <laughs> hi um <laughs> It just reminds me of Soldade and I can't get past that as much as I'd like to. If I see once I've seen it either in a rehearsal or you know at a pre-party and it's on stage, then it may click different, but it's not in my top ten or my top fifteen. And mm. to be honest, you probably could pull off a Maro in the final, but you never know. Stranger things have happened. It's just nice to breathe with all the like the boppy songs that we've got. With a song like Rito, so. And because we mentioned the country, let's continue with Serbia. Lara, if you also want to continue about <clears throat> Serbia. Teodora, volume te duši slato do neba. I absolutely love this. This is my number one. It literally is. I'm mm. not Serbian. I don't think I'm Serbian. I literally. <laughs> baby, look at the face. I'm a kurve. Uh, I connect to this song and I cry every time. I love Teodora, her voice is stunning. The general message with the purple flower. I Yeah, I'm just in awe every single time. Every single time. And Serbia did make the right choice in the end, even though there was some backlash. If you look at it in hindsight, this is, as much as it's a ballad, it does have strong potential to win. 
and that's why it's my number one because it's just ready it's there it's perfect and you're just mesmerized for those three minutes or how, however long the song is and ah volente teodora and because i also didn't know that the uh the start of the song with the small like island uh rocks that kind of part uh some guys and thank you very much on the comments on our reaction video posted that this island is Corfu Kerkira in in Greece no way yes no way uh a very special place for the Serbians uh historically like with the wars and all that, and also that flowers was there, and uh, a lot of Serbians supported our reaction and said the whole story on the comment. So shout out to all the guys from Serbia, thank you so much, and I love the song. That's all I'm gonna say. I love love. Oh, you got the heart. heart I don't know what happened there. Why? It never works for me either. Don't but, worry. Yeah. I'm not alone. Yes, me too. Those, we are the only two that we don't get hurt. Um, Oz, about Serbia? Okay, yeah, that's all I know. Uh, but like, <laughs> seriously, like I like I'm also quite known to be like not a big fan of ballads, and like I do have like strong opinions when it comes to ballads, like Noosh. But at the same time, I think I appreciate a, a good composition and. To be honest, like her song is just it, it's so captivating, and like it's it's just beautiful music and any staging on top of it. Like her national finals performance was beautiful, and like if she just repeated that on Eurovision, that's gonna be a huge punch in the in the heart. So like it's just um it's beautiful, and I really 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 love the song. I it's top ten material. Really, it really is. News? Yeah, like, this wasn't in my top 15, but that does not mean that I don't think it's going to do well because I think it is. And I, I again, was absolutely mesmerized by her, this performance. It's hard to get bored by it just because of her vocal talent and just that catchy um, ver the chorus was really, really catchy. It's just, it, it gets in your head, you know? So I think that those people that are there for the ballads are going to like this. And there isn't a lot, like you mentioned, this year. So this is going to stand out. And I think it probably will be in the top 10. But it's just not one that I've been playing on repeat. That's the only difference. Mm. Yes. And let's continue with another ballad this year. Uh, Israel uh, with Harry Kane. Uh, mm. Presently. I love the song. It's the kind of ballad that I was talking before. Uh, I needed something more at the end for me personally. I like the the high note part. Um, it's not like my top five kind of song, but you can't deny that this girl can sing. Like the vocals are good. Uh, so I think that Israel will do good this year. They will be in the final. There's no doubt. And I think that this may do well with the juries, like and the televote, but they will appreciate the vocal. Oz, I think the song is impeccable. It's so good. And what I love about the song is that it does not stay in one lane. It just grows and grows and grows. Like I just love that there's even a bit of like, like synthy EDM in the second pre-chorus. Um, towards the second um chorus and like it kind of it's a bit rocky as well like when you listen listen to it with open ears with like headphones like there's a lot of like rock elements going on and like her voice is just um out of this world i actually saw like a short snippet of her singing live and I she's like actually identical she yeah. is identical to the um to the recorded version and i think i'm just looking forward to seeing this beautiful piece live because it is a beautiful piece of music and i think she is just pulling it off and yeah it's 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 a beautiful beautiful music and i listen to it quite on a, on a daily basis on my spotify news yeah i mean i've heard the song <laughs> i don't know what everyone thinks about me talking about not <laughs> reacting to the song but i have listened to the song a couple times and it is a beautiful song it's just and i, I can see this going into the final there's no question about it I think this is a top 10 song as well. But personally, again, 
you know me, I'm not going to be going for those kind of songs, even though I can see the talent and its potential to do well in this contest. And I think, you know, it will. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it depends about like, how do you feel about the song? Not this song, every kind of song with, uh, because for me personally, this is a Melody Festival song. I could easily see like this song with Maria Sur in Melody Festival and easily. Like it gives mm. me these kind of vibes because mm. it doesn't have any ethnic vibes on it. It's more like a typical Eurovision ballad. Yeah, yeah. it's a pop, it's a pop ballad. Pop ballad. Yes, it's a pop ballad. It's I mean, like it's ballad. mainstream. It's a mainstream song. So like yes. you could definitely see this doing well globally, which I could see why they picked that. So yes. So we continue because we have a lot of countries uh, in this last clip. We continue with, let's go to, ah, far away, Australia. <sighs> yeah. Melkale, Melkale. <laughs> Here comes Do Oz's uh, accent. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> Melkale. Oh, I was, actually listening, I was actually listening to that song today again as well. Um, I love that duo, like the music video actually seemed a little bit weird after watching a couple of times because they're so hypnotizing and also I like the way that they're not giving away any hints as to what their staging is gonna look like but you know what I love about this song is that it's the first time that the indigenous Australian elements are being used and I for I forgot I I forgot a bit I, I can I speak I forgot it again that there is this um huge <laughs> did you read huge um oh yes <laughs> did you do um, I well, love a long did you do <laughs> I like it longer but as long the longer the better anyway um <clears throat> that was <laughs> this thing behave yeah. man so, have you seen it live on stage? It's so big, Ooh. and I don't know how they do, how they're going to My carry it all the way from Australia. But but they better do it because like I can actually see that being used and this indigenous moment flourishing, and all of us actually sort of like celebrate the indigenous Australian elements. It's the first time ever since Australia got involved with Eurovision that they're doing this. So like, let's <laughs> celebrate that. I think this is their big, big, biggie, biggest selling, unique selling point. I'm talking about marketing right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lara? Yeah, I, lo I, lo I love the song. Yeah, sorry. Oh, I love you. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen, it's about fucking time. We have been waiting for Electric Fields for how long? Donkey's years. Oh, wow. When they were announced, I have I, I threw my phone. I screamed. I was like, finally, we literally see pure Australian indigenous culture with a long, girthy didgeridoo. And I'd, honestly, they, they're just a duo that you just want to see live and you know they can serve. And I cannot wait to see what they do on stage, whether it's just them two or whether they have some other, you know, indigenous sort of characteristics in the background. I'm here for it. And I think it's in my top 15. Yeah, it's number 14. So I'm I'm absolutely here for it. Nice. So this isn't in my top 15, but I do think it's going to be a potential underdog this year, like Gustav from Belgium last year. And they're very similar songs. That's not why I'm saying that, but... This, like you said, everything I was probably going to say anyway, this has actual Australian culture in it. And that is something, again, like that I have been wanting to see from Australia for a while. So that will be something that stands out and people will be like, oh, this is actually Australian. And like, I feel like other countries have used kind of elements of didgeridoos before, but it's actually coming from the, co the country that it originates from. So it's going to be a, a really nice an interesting thing to see how they stage it. I can't wait. I love the cultural moments and the language with the indigenous. Everything about that, I support. I love it. Uh, it's something unique. Uh, the song was a bit of a letdown for me, to be honest. Um, I was a huge, huge fan of the uh, national uh, 2000 and whatever entry. Uh, so I had high hopes for this entry. And 
the song at the beginning when I first heard it, I was like, yes, but for me personally, it didn't go anywhere. I needed like an explosion at the end, something, something big, because I think that they can deliver live. So it's not bad for me, but uh, for me, it's somewhere in the middle. At this mm. point. Yeah, that's that's how I feel as well. That's why it's not in my top fifty. Yes, either, I like I it. I don't hate it. There's yeah. nothing bad about the song. I'm just not like a huge, huge fan. But I uh, also I think Nus will uh, agree with me that uh, this is the song that I have on the table with. I need to see this live. Okay. The music video didn't help us at all with that, and I, I think yes. it's really put everyone to like not put this so high. But like you said, Oz, I think that's maybe their motive with this, to surprise people, potentially. Probably. I hope so. Yeah. hope so. So we continue with um, Austria. <sighs> we will rave. The ram de bam bam but we will rave with the night. A dun de dun dun I love that. Uh, <laughs> Lara, listen, baby can mother me anytime she fucking lies because I am obsessed with this song. This is exactly what Austria needed. I don't think anyone understands how much Austria needed a bop like this. Listen, we loved Poe. We love Poe Poe to go go because now we have, we're raving. We are literally going to be in a sweat box because she can dance. She can sing at the same time. <laughs> she can literally not die with shit lungs like I am. Uh, provide the goods, basically. And I, I, she's literally a sure qualifier, isn't it? If, if this doesn't qualify, this motherfucking thing is rigged. I don't even care. I will fucking riot if she doesn't actually qualify or come top 10. Lara, do you want... The naked dancer from the music video to be on stage. Maybe I'm a single ass woman. Of course I do. <laughs> I'm coming up to 30. I need to find a husband. Of course I do. Look, you just reminded me the music video, Apostolis. I'm having I'm having moments in my mind. Yes. Um it is to be honest, like as Eurovision, as a Eurovision fan who loves bops and a good boogie. This is 10 out of 10, 1,000 quadrillion out of 10, because she's got the vocals, the track is amazing. Um, I like the theme of raving, and I like the way that the song develops, and it just sort of like is a big explosion towards the end. Like, I can, like, when I listen to that music every single day, by the way, I do, like, it's on my most streamed on play, on repeat on my Spotify. I actually think of the staging all the time and like I rarely take minutes per day, maybe hours, um, thinking about what a staging of this iconic song will look like. And to be honest, I, also Colleen is like, she is an incredible queen. I love the way that she's been promoting her song. She's been promoting her journey. She is incredibly hands-on when it comes to her brand. And she's gorgeous. Like, this song is in my top five. For me, it's in my top ten right now. I think I have it, like, seventh, eighth place, something like that. For me, this is, like, um, a DJ, like, club track meets Eurovision and no. makes this club banger. Because, for me, this is the club banger of the year. We have a lot of bops, a lot of great dance songs, but this is so club, so club is so, uh, I think that on the arena, the crowd will go crazy. And yeah. also it's so gay, like it's it's so Eurovision, it's so, yeah. uh, I don't I don't have words to describe it. Well done, this will easily fly through the final. And I hope that the juries will appreciate the song. And because I'm afraid about the juries and this song and the vocals, if they're going to be good or shaky, I need to see this live. Uh, but I think that the the televote will be good with Austria. Nush? Mm. So 
I actually think that she's going to be okay with the juries because I know that she's in the Eurovision circles. She has been on stage yeah. to be the temporary dancer or fill in for like Eleni uh, yeah. and other people. And also, she's been involved in junior Eurovision. She's worked in she Europe. Even, she even did the flag parade. Yeah, like, she's done. She's done so much, so she'll know some people. I'm not saying that that's the reason why she's going to do well. This song, like Oz, as well, like it's 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 on my library. It's like top in my library. Like yeah. I listen to this all the time. If I want to, like, yeah. really get out and run, this is the one song that gets me out of mm. the house because I know that it's just going to lift me up. It's going to get me in the mood. That didn't sound right, but you know, it's just going to get me in the mood to just dance and have a good time and be happy. And this is very much me in a nutshell, this song, because this is the kind of music that I listen to. But it has a lot of this nostalgia sounds that I grew up with. And it's going to have that effect with a lot of people in the Eurovision fandom and uh, just the people that come watch it on the night. Because, you know, I'm not, and I think it will also resonate with younger people as well. And it will bring them that nostalgia sound, even though they probably never really heard that. It really is an all rounder. And I don't see this not getting through to the final. It's 100% going to go through. I'd be very upset if it doesn't, like Laura said, with... I don't think I could be a Eurovision fan after that if it's not in the final because yeah. it's just too perfect. And I do think the staging is going to be good. However, there's a part of me that's like, Austria staging lately hasn't been incredible compared to some other countries. So I just hope that with her Eurovision expertise and with the Austrian delegation, we'll do a very good job of putting this together, which I, I have a feeling they will. Especially, like you said, the men will be there. So... You've already got ninety well, percent of the Eurovision watchers interested. I think Colleen had a um, she, she had a uh, Instagram live Q and A situation, and I was watching a bit of it. And if I'm not wrong, she actually mentioned something about pyros because the fans were asking, of course, and she actually said that it was it was. I, I think she said something like um, pyros are actually a part of the plan. I think I think I think we will get one of the best yeah. stagings uh ever from Austria. Like I think this is going to be if not the best, one of the best stagings yeah. ever from okay. Austria. It has to be because the song this song deserves a good staging. Uh but from one bop, a club banger, let's move to another one. The Netherlands. <laughs> you ba 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 you ba. <laughs> and, and let's start with news because I know that you're oh. a fan. I mean, okay, where do I begin with this? I know everything that I said from for Austria just now kind of does re like relate to this too. It has everything that I want in a song, but I do think that this song has more Euro, like it's made more for Eurovision than Austria's. And even though I think that that is meant for Eurovision too, this is even more because you've got so many European references in here. It changes up. It's in Dutch. So it's it's following to its true identity. And then we've got Dutch Gabber in here, which is something that I followed for a very long time, but I did not even in my closest dreams think that that was going to come to the Eurovision stage from the Netherlands because they never send anything like this. Yes. Um, so and then you've got this outro bit, which is bringing the mood <sighs> down. Oh. But that plays with the, the audience's um, emotions. So I think that this is a potential winner. I don't know. It could, like, it's a potential. I'm not saying, I think we can't really predict this year, but it could do that if the staging is done correctly. So if that is done, I don't know. I think we're at least a top 10, at least. For me, to be quick, like, at the beginning, I wasn't Shade. a big fan. <laughs> I, I wasn't a big fan of the song at the beginning. I didn't get it. I don't know why. I didn't hate it, but it was like, it's okay song. Now I think it's going to be like, I don't know, top five, but I have it on my top 10 right now. Uh, for me, this is maybe one of the most, it's the grower for me personally. 
And I listen to it every fucking single day, especially in the car, going to work every morning. This is like the wake me up song for me. Every morning I listen to this song and I can see the potential winner with a televote. Uh, juries, question yeah. mark. I don't know how the juries will appreciate this song, but this will be like top 10 for sure in the final. Laura? Whiplash. Whiplash, I'm going to make a claim, then he's going to win it, then I have to make a bigger claim because the song just pops off, literally just pops off. I actually cried at the end of it and it takes a lot for a song to make me cry. So, yeah, that completely catches you off guard. But this is the song that everyone is drawn to the most this year. Also, his PR game is very, very fucking clever because he's done reverse psychology but then at the same time, use some PR from last year, i.e. Cardias, which there's no comparison there whatsoever. But he used a similar sort of PR to go with his PR. So he's got a stronger approach. And I noticed it and I was like, you were a sneaky ass motherfucker. No, but I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. You can literally see where he's taking chops and change. But him and Cardia talk, like they're talking all the time on social media. You can see it when they interact. So it's like, I know what you're doing. You know what, he's been doing it. that with a lot of the top five last year. Like, he was he was yeah. teaching Gabba to Alessandra a lot. Like, I don't know if Yeah, seen. I see the video and I was like, what? Yeah. I was so confused. But, yeah, I mean, if he wins, I wouldn't be mad. Genuinely, I'd be like, let Joel, well deserved because it's everywhere in the charts right now, I'm not going to lie, and we can't escape it for a long, long time. Oz, will you be happy with Amsterdam 2025? Absolutely. Absolutely. I can take the Eurostar from here and it's going to be less costly than Sweden. So, yeah. like, it's going to be very easy for me because I'm in London, but not just because of that. I mean, to be honest, Apostolis, I actually very much agree with you when you said that you were not quite drawn to the music because, to be honest, for me, like, it was not really much like, okay, this is a song that I'm going to binge every day. And I still am not binging. It's not in my like to, it's not in my like to do daily list stuff like that. But I think it is an anthem. Um, it's definitely qualify. It is just we could be surprised for the better or worse. We can we should be ready for everything. Like yeah, but I think I mean the fans love this song and this entry, and I think it's gonna do really really well from from the fandom. Okay, and now we continue with another unique entry. We have Switzerland. Oh. Oh. Also another entry that on my initial listening, I was like, okay, I, oh, it's okay. Have some good parts. Uh, I think is genius. The song, the progression of the song, uh, especially in the second chorus when the chorus hits uh it makes me want to cry uh, uh i hope he can sing this live the same way <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, Oz, i cannot i cannot i uh, cannot <laughs> oz will you agree it's a hard song to sing live okay i actually <laughs> have been running this idea with some of my singer friends um i i do a lot of falsetto in my in my gigs but his high notes are like 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 almost like not almost like it's like soprano level yes it is like a female range okay so in order for a man to just go up to there and then just like sing that those whole notes so first of all it makes me a little bit worried can he pull it off there's a lot of backing vocals going on so i think there's going to be like some sort of like pause that he's going to take and the backing vocals will fill in but at the same time you know what i said about uh, netherlands like an anthem this one is an iconic anthem like this one is eurovision like he's a queer person and apologies if i'm actually mis misgendering um him like if 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 he if he's they them I didn't know I about think, it. So I like... think it's it's non-binary. It's a it's a they them. Okay, <laughs> them. I didn't know, so I'm gonna carry on with them. I just didn't know. Apologies. Um, sorry. Um, but like it's just they are just incredible, and I love the music video, and there's so much that can be utilized for the for the for the for the live staging. 
I thought that they were a bit like Mika, yeah. you know, the singer Mika. Oh, I so I like get some... Mika now. I didn't think of that, but that's so... So Mika, so Mika. And like some people actually thought that I was saying something bad, but Mika is Mika. Yeah. Like there is no other Mika. So I actually, I was actually saying something incredibly um, like Offensive. elevating. It's amazing. So I love it. I love it. Top 10 for Me sure. Too. I agree. I really love this song. I I I liked it from the beginning though. It didn't grow on me or anything. It was just a good song from the start because it changed up so much. And yeah, his vocal abilities, that was something that was like, whoa, how is he doing that? And also like you've got rap in here, you've got like a little bit of electronic drum and bass in here. Like it is sonically so pleasing to hear all these different genres combined together. And that is something in Eurovision that is becoming more of a success story when artists are able to genre bend, because I think you get more of an audience to like it if you're able to touch into those different genres. And it's clever, this one, because it does it so much. Uh, but you're right. I don't know how he's going to perform. So as long as, I mean, sorry, they, I, I really hope that they are able to do that. And if they are, then yeah, this is a top 10. It's even top five, potentially. Mm -hmm. They have the best fashion sense on this God-given earth. I'm not going to lie. I need to know their designer. But they are climbing up the odds daily to the point where I do think this is a strong contender to win. Who knew drum and bass and opera could suit so well together in the most chaotic way? really and when you look at this and you see the way they've produced it you're just like for any musician or anyone that's musically inclined your ears are like I'm creaming because it's just so aesthetically pleasing that you you just don't know where to look or what to listen to next because you want to have them on repeat and they are just so cute I'm sorry but I've seen clips of them they are the cutest person on earth I just oh yeah I wouldn't be mad at this one at all. Geneva 2025, I wouldn't be mad. Uh, also gives me a bit of Harry Styles, sorry. I just, yes, I was just... I can... um, yeah, 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 I see that. Uh, for me, the best music video this year, we have a lot of good music videos, but I think this is my personal favorite music video and the best rap part. Like when yeah. the rap part uh, starting, for me, it's the best that we have this year. And I was surprised that we got this good rap part from this kind of opera pop song it was unexpected so well done sweden let's go sweden uh laura vi elsker dig sverige så jättemycket tack för allt tack för marcus and martinez harry good vi fan i am obsessed i never joke what i'll be truthful I wasn't to start with because obviously I love air so much. And me and my close friend Dan, we go in the slot heart and all we sing is air. Now, <laughs> we literally, what? we love the slot heart. What is literally. that? It's basically a pub in the inner garden. Anyway, <laughs> listen, it's the slot heart providing the vibes. Um, I now have this on repeat. This is on my repeat playlist on Spotify daily. The production oh it's like the matrix and it makes me want to become a virgin again to pop a cherry because i cannot it is visually pleasing and i'm obsessed and their vocals with it they're fine they're gonna you know they're gonna do well probably top 15 i'm not mad we all knew it was gonna happen let's be real because of last year we all knew that they were going to come back and win it this year. Even though we had strong bangers like Danny Sacedo, I'm always going to be a Danny girly. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not mad. They're on repeat daily and I strut to this. Hopefully we'll get a big ass from working out to this. And yeah. Hack, Marcus and Martinez. Yeah, I think this is a really good hosting country song. It is going <laughs> to be the beginner of the final, right? So... It is literally doing exactly what it's meant to do. It's welcoming everyone in. It's probably got one of the best stagings we've seen of the live performances. I think I was blown away by it. I didn't really give any attention to the song before that. 
to be honest. But now with the song, it's an absolute banger. Like it's so good and it's so Swedish. I know that they're Norwegian. Everyone's going to get mad when you talk about this being very Swedish, but I'm sorry, the actual production is very Swedish. Yeah. Like yeah. And maybe Norwegian countries have a similar production style. They probably do. But like, I think this just has that Swedish house mafia kind of esque sound about it. That's also nostalgic once again, but it's an, such a good additive to the party this year. Twink twins for Eurovision. Like every day, single day. Seriously, it was about time. Like, like you guys mentioned, it is, it, it's, it's indulging. <laughs> And it's a new thing, and also like when it comes, like they put, <laughs> they put the synth in synthy pads, like it, like the production, like Laura you mentioned, like the production, the production, darling, of that song is incredible. But at the same time, I also like this year Malfest. If we can just like put a quick note on that, it just looked like a full blown Eurovision because it was such an incredible year and. I loved pretty much all the acts. Like there was no lackluster act. They were all incredible. I'm a huge daughter fan, by the way. Like me too. Like even if she even, even if she burps, I'm gonna be sold. <laughs> like she is amazing. And um it makes me sad that she is not going through because I also quite liked her song, even if it was like a bit of like low tempo, like quite mellow. Um, but Wink Twins, top ten. Let's go. I agree with all of you. And we have three more countries to go. The next one is Cyprus. We have Celia Capsis and Liar. Uh, I know that you know that I love the song. So let's start with Oz. Uh, how do you feel about Liar? What? what? <laughs> First of all, I am so proud of Cyprus this year that they're sending an incredible bop. But at the same time, like Celia is this beautiful young thing that can sing. She is incredibly talented. She her her I think people don't really credit her for her voice. Like everyone says that, oh, she's a great dancer. She is singing a a uh, pop pop blah blah but like her voice is impeccable and i've seen her live like i've seen her videos and stuff like that she's going to steal the stage and i don't know if she's a bit forgotten in terms of like the chaos of eurovision that's been going on for the last one week or two weeks but i think she is coming with a bang i love the song i stream it on a daily basis and I think she's an amazing dancer. And then that sort of like dance break that we have in the music video and in the, in the, uh, in the music is going to be used a lot. In the music video, if you guys have noticed, actually, she is not doing much. Like there's just like this scene in the bar that she's on a table and dancing. I think we're going to get something extraordinary. Like I think she is going to bring the dance break of the century. Okay, so... However much I love this and I love her, I agree with everything you just said, all of you. I think that, you know, it is following in the roots of Cyprus every year in the sense of like, we've got a polished uh, female pop banger, which this is, and it is, it is very catchy and she is so infectious and all that. But I'm worried just with this year's level where everyone's changing it up completely that it might not fall in their favor because of that. And I just need to see her perform live, which I know she is very talented. So I'm not too worried on her capability, but it's the staging. How are they going to like actually, you know, have her on the stage? Like again, yeah, are we going to have a, a dance break? Which we've been getting a lot on the last few years. So I, I don't know. I feel like we needed a little yeah. bit more punchy, just a little bit more punchy. And that's my only... I want a Greece from Cyprus. That's what I want. A complete different flavor. Yes. Uh, on that note, for me, I think that I can see your point of view, but at the same time, among all the crazy acts that we have this year, this is a classic Eurovision pop. Like, this is a classical Eurovision pop song. 
And for me personally, the only country this year that it's similar and I can see a battle is Austria. This dancing, uh, because Kalin also is a dancer, Celia is also a dancer. So I think this will be a close battle. And uh, Laura? She, we need to remember she's young. So for her to come through with all this energy and passion, and you can tell she loves what she does. You can see it. And she's going to have a very, very good long-standing career ahead of her. She is going to come in full force with a dance, maybe with a dance break, maybe with some beautiful Cypriot man she can send my way. Listen, the girl can sing. She knows what she's doing. And if, you know, at any point she has a wobble, we will be there to cheer her on and literally be like, get the fuck back up and perform because you are that bad bitch. And to have this as a song that, you know, is a bop, but isn't like what we've got with the constant boom, boom, boom. This is more, I guess you could say Britney, like Britney pop sort of vibe. More of a girly bop. It's, it's more of a girly bop compared to like a ethnic whiplash bop. It's a nice little breather, which can actually turn the heads and probably would do well with juries if it's soft on the ears. So it, we all need to, you know, as much as we love the song, we need to see what it's like perform live. And we know she's going to deliver anyway, so we're fine. She's fine. And moving on to the United Kingdom. Uh, Oz? So I actually just saw a like short snippet of Ollie performing Dizzy, and I think it's going to be incredibly queer. Like, he is incredibly hands-on with his material. He is an incredible um, performer, and I think like very acknowledged um, within Europe and internationally, which always comes with a risk, you know, what's how, how is it gonna play out on Eurovision? Uh, like, is that going to be successful, successful or not? Personally, I really feel like the song itself is very listenable. It is a radio friendly song. Um, it just, for me, needs a little bit of a kick because Eurovision is also about a bit of spice, you know? I think the song could have been spiced up a little bit. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not going to succeed. I think we are in treat for a good staging. Um, I know that Ollie works with the best of the best, and there's going to be a lot, a lot of um, surprises going on. And I think, like, he has been, like, Ollie has been training a lot, like, physically, which kind of, like gives out a hint with regards to a possibility of seeing something, us seeing something quite acrobatic. I think it's going to be great, but like, I mean, I wish the song was a little bit more of a grower because I feel like I consumed it all. Like I listened it to, for a couple of times and it's been consumed. Like there is nothing else left. Whereas um, like... I'm on the, sa on the same page with you, but... The moment I saw the live performance that he did, like with the Vivo or something like that from BBC, mm -hmm. uh, the vocals were good live, like with the harmonies and the backing vocals. Amazing singer, amazing singer. Uh, so at the beginning, I was like, it's okay. I like it. I can put it on Spotify, listen to every day. It's it's vibey song for me. But the live vocals, like, upgraded, like, 10 places up for me. Now I think it's on my sixth place, on my top 10, after the live performance. Laura? I right, listen. He reminds me of the Pet Shop Boys. Very 80s. Sim mm. video I am fucking obsessed with. Apart from the bath, it looks like something out of salt burn. I'm sorry, Ollie. I can't get it out of my head. It traumatised me, that film. Anyway, I... <laughs> play this song on a daily basis. And I never do that with any UK entry. I didn't even do that with May last year. I know some, like I said, I might have done. I didn't. This is on repeat daily. I am absolutely obsessed with this song. I'm obsessed with his voice and his characteristics as a performer. You know what? Even if he ends up mid, I'd still be very proud because yes. from what I've read, he's going to have four dancers. And I don't know what else. So I'm excited for what's going to come around. I really love the song. I do think it's a good UK entry, especially for this year. It has the elements that 
I was wanting and expecting from Ollie. I don't, there's nothing surprising here though, I would say, but I do think he is going to do a really good job performing this and it's in the final anyway. So we're not worrying about if it's going through, I think it probably would go through in if it was in semifinals, but I am looking forward to seeing what he does with the staging. However, I was told that it is going to be very similar to the music video. So I'm not mad about that. I think it was captivating. But yeah, a bit like Oz, like I feel like I've heard it now. You know, I, I don't want to play it on repeat. However, I do like listening to it. If it's there, I'm enjoying it. Okay. And now, last but not least, we have uh, Grace. With da, 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 da. Da. <laughs> Come here, put your hands up. <laughs> um, who wants to start? Like Oz, Oz, you can take it. Oz, it's yours. Guys. <laughs> Guys. Okay. First of all, all of my Greek <laughs> friends are going crazy over like Zari. Uh, also in Turkish, it's Zar. So again, something that we share in common. Thank you yes. very much. Aristopoli. Um, and to be honest, I'm incredibly proud of Marina Sati for taking a risk and bringing Greek also slash Balkan cultures all together and like synthesizing it and bringing a bop. I know it's not the easiest tune to the ear because like from Greece, we are like, I'm, I'm, I'm talking through like a musician language, but I think everyone understands what I say. We are quite used to hearing um like progressive um elements when it comes to music this one is a deal breaker it is very irregular you know it has got a lot of like pads going on um almost a bit of like talking wise singing but singers would understand it's the most difficult thing to, thing to do and marina sati in that sense is like that like she is a walking art piece like she is so talented and it like the song y'all like the song is so good My, can i just very honestly this is the last thing i'm going to say i can talk until the morning my biggest worries is that with the wrong staging this can be demolished like we've got an amazing music video we've got an amazing song but the staging it's a risky move and I hope that they're working towards it because we need a very specific strategy. And you know, I'm Greek, I love the song. I'm not gonna speak about the Greek entry, but uh, I'm super happy this year because after so, so many years, uh, everyone in Greece is talking about Eurovision guys. like. It's the most viral thing in Greece right now. Uh, you can go to a coffee shop, to a supermarket. Like, everyone is talking about Marina and Zari. And we think that we can win Eurovision this year. I, you can say that. But here in Greece, like, the things are super exciting about this entry. I think the best, uh, like, super heavy gossip thing after like Calomira, Secret Combination, like we live in this kind of moments in Greece right now. Uh, Laura? Oh, could you imagine if Greece won? I'd be so happy. I genuinely would. And I'd be the Stay first to be, person guys. there. Come, come to Greece. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. I can give you my house, like do whatever you We're want. We're Greek now. We're officially Greek now. Thessaloniki 2025, 2025. bring it oh, on. Literally. <laughs> I am. Um, I mean, I listened to this song when I was in Vilnius a couple of weeks ago, which is Lithuania, and I have been obsessed since. I scream like I'm Greek. I swing around serviettes like I'm Greek. I play this all the fucking time. My work are absolutely dog shit sick of me because I play this so much to the point where I'll actually start teaching them to Greek dance and I can't even dance Greek myself. And I, I'm just obsessed. She's done such a good job with this song. And apparently she wants to film this in one shot, like one camera angle. Yes. Girlie, I mean, if it works, I'll be very proud of you. And 
if it doesn't, we can we can drink until the cows come home. It's all good. I'll still be there and have Godiki and Tasunaliki. It's all fine. I mean, you guys pretty much said it all again, but that's okay. I literally am also obsessed. I mean, I I loved her from the moment I discovered her. I think when the announcement came that she was you know, going forward for Greece. And I am so happy that we've got a complete 180 on the direction that Greece has been going. I'm not surprised that it's doing very well in Greece because it's exciting, it's unique, it's got Greek Zornai in there as well, which I absolutely love. And it's also very contemporary and radio friendly. Like, I think that this song has everything that it needs to do well in Eurovision. And... Yeah, I did hear from Costas, actually. Did he tell you this about the one-shot thing? He told me that, like, <coughs> the same thing. And I was like, oh, no, I want that music video on stage. I just mm. want it. You know, I don't know how they would do that. But I like the whole stereotype thing that she was playing. bring the German tourist on stage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> actually. But, you know, that's the only worry I have. But I could see this potentially winning it, too. I could, it's got something different enough for people to be like, what is this? But it's from Greece. I can I can hear it's from Greece and her voice is really good as well. I don't know why people keep saying this is Indian, but I don't hear it as that. <laughs> I think I'm, only the beginning, you can see like yeah, some vocal. Bollywood. It's just, it's just high pitch. That it's like with La Daniva, actually. Everyone's comparing that to a Hindi kind of style, but that's just the way she sings. So I, I don't think that that's gonna be an issue or anything like i i like i like hindi music as well yes. so. <laughs> um but yeah i think this is gonna do well i it's definitely a qualifier how not how wouldn't it be and as a greek like of course i want to win my country to like be the first and to do extremely well if does if this song doesn't win but even if this song ended up like 12 13, 15 of the grand final. I'm happy that we get to sing, to see the Greek language, to dance to a Greek sound, like have the best time in Malmö with this song. And I'm just happy with Marina and the whole direction that we have this year with Greece. So we come to an end, but of course I need to ask you, not the winner, like the question is going to be, a little bit different. Uh, your most listened song this year, like your favorite song to listen to. Mm. So put up your phones. Uh, I don't have to see my phone. My my. I, I don't think I do either, but I wonder if there's- a I already song. know. Uh, my most there. listened song yeah. is Greece, is Daddy. Um, only like the first <coughs> two days I have listened more than 50, 100 times. <laughs> so I think it's going to be on my wrapped up season, like top two. I'm, I'm sure. Um, Lara? I have two. No. Yeah, I've got two. Three. So my most is of state, oh, fucking obvious, Slovenia, Veronica. Yes. Uh then Serbia, and then you're gonna think it's really like out there, but France. The man has got me in a chokehold, and I am not resisting because they are literally on my repeat every single day. Noosh? I have two, two, and that is Austria and the Netherlands. I have been playing them, I think, the exact same amount every single day, pretty much, and I'm still not bored, so. Yeah. <laughs> and us? Well, I've got two as well. I well, we didn't really talk about Croatia, but like if we're just like generalizing the whole that thing. That too. Oh no, and I forgot about that. Them is like number one, followed by We Will Rave, Austria. Okay, so we have two votes for uh for Austria news and um, Oz. Okay, interesting, guys. Thank you, thank you so much for this whole three videos that we did together. Uh, we can have another video maybe some days before we all get to travel to Malmö. Uh, mm -hmm. Make some last predictions about... Uh, be because the rehearsals, we will start these days. So 
maybe we can have a meetup just a few days before Malmö. And then, <laughs> you know, the rest of Malmö. The, the, the true deal. Malmö! Uh, uh, thank, thank you so much. And we will see each other soon. I yes. love you, Agapesmo. I love you, Agapesmo.